weeks ago, President Bola Tinubu led a ministerial retreat where he gave a marching order to members of his cabinet on delivery of their ministry's mandate. Let me remind you of what he said. He has set standards to how he hopes for them to carry out their duties. In fact, there are parameters for performance and there will be routine checks on whether they have delivered on the ministry mandate. Let me remind you of what President Tirubu said. For me, nothing to fear. If you miss the objective, we review. <laughs> if no performance, you leave us. No one is an island, and the book stop on my desk. Don't be a clog in the wheel of Nigerian progress. Let us look forward. Let us be determined that corruption will go. Progress will be achieved. That was a few weeks ago when the president at the opening session of the ministerial retreat. If you don't perform, you will go. Well, as a Nigerian, have you been looking and watching what the ministers and their ministries are doing? Have you been monitoring whether or not they are performing? Because, well, <laughs> the man says, the box stops at his desk. One ministry that has indeed gotten the attention of the nation is the Interior Ministry, where the minister is showing some character and passion in delivering his mandate. However, there's so much work to be done and expectations are high. A lot of people did not even think that the Interior Ministry has so much work or perhaps has enormous responsibilities and has under it its own mandates for delivery that are so numerous. The man promised to clear backlog of passports and the immigration service that was done now he said there will be the congestion of prison and it appears over 4,000 inmates will be going home after their fines appears to have been cleared tonight let's delve into the ministry mandate let's do some appraisals let's ask them some questions and particularly uh concern tonight in this conversation about the issues of security internal security of this country which is quite very important. It's one of the major responsibilities of government. Tonight, Honorable Minister of Interior, Honorable Tunji, uh, Blubomi Tunji Ojo joins us live here in Abu Jassiru. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Shino. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, um, when I spoke with you and uh, extended this invitation to you, I said, I I'm more uh, concerned about the issue of security, which you told me on the phone, that there are a lot that you are doing. And I'm, I mean, I would love to, the, the last time, we couldn't delve into the area of internal security. But tonight, let's begin with it. In what respect do you think that Nigerians should be happy about what you are doing? And what do you have in the bag in terms of internal security? Well, thank you very much. And thank you, Nigerians. Um, <clears throat> as the pre I will start from what the president said. He said nobody is an island. And you know, security is everybody's business. Security is not a single man's business. It's everybody's business. And I can tell you, that um, this particular administration, under the leadership of uh, President Bola Metinubu, has recorded a lot of successes. But just as you know, uh, procedures, methodologies are not issues that you discuss, you know, um, on camera. But nevertheless, we can see the effect in terms of uh, banditry. We can see the reduction in banditry. We can see the um, reduction in um, kidnapping. We can see reduction across um, all indicators of uh, insecurity in our society. Just as the National Security Advisor said, a lot of coordination is presently going on, and all uh, the police, uh, Ministry of Police Affairs, Ministry of Interior, and of course, the Ministry of Defense, we are all working together in synergy to ensure that Nigerians can sleep with their two eyes closed. I haven't said that, but to the Ministry of Interior, per se, I've always said this, and I'll repeat it again, that um, it is my principle, it's my belief, and I know that the president shares that same uh, passion. In fact, he is the architect of this particular statement that um, 
is, is, is secure border is a safe nation. You know, you can only uh, defend your, your country when your borders are actually secured. So in that area, a lot of work is being done at the moment in terms of border governance um, in, uh, in, uh, in conjunction with other uh, border um, um, security agencies. We are presently putting all the structure to, uh, in place to be able to secure our border space. As I've said, uh, our border is quite interesting. Two of the countries that we border in West Africa, then two are non-ECOWAS countries. For example, Cameroon is not ECOWAS, and I think Chad is not ECOWAS. Niger and Benin Republic, these are ECOWAS countries. So obviously, from ECO, those that are uh, members of the ECOWAS state, of course, they can enter Nigeria by virtue of the ECOWAS treaty. But, do, but Cameroon and, and um, and um, Chad, under normal condition, are not licensed to enter without uh, a visa or, you know, um, entry permits, you know. So there's a lot that we need to do. So we have to be able to look at the effect of, um, of uh, activities within the Sahel, how it affects our border communities, and also be able to look at the issues, as I always say, how do we make our, country, our border communities more integral rather than being contagious as they are at the moment. So there's a lot that uh, this government is actually working on with regards to, to that. And also, let me also speak about NSCDC. NSCDC, we know NSCDC is, is uh, by law empowered to protect critical national assets. NSCDC has, is, I mean, is, is um, empowered to, pro to protect our brown waters. They are expected to protect even our mineral sites and, of course, even some of our farmlands and our schools and a lot of things. So we are, we are actually, we've launched this uh, Safe School Initiative, which is to be able to ensure the main objective for me and uh, is to make sure that a child, either you are in the, the farthest of places from Abuja, should be able to have the same confidence as a child in Abuja has to go to school and, and knowing fully well that he's going to go to school in a safe manner and come back home in a safe manner. So may you be in Meduguri, may you be in the Bakasi, may you be anywhere else. You should have the level of um, security that a child in uh, Abuja has or a child in Lagos. So we want to make sure that, um, as the president always says, renewed hope is not about protecting only the strong. It's about protecting the strong as well as protecting the weak. It's about making up for the inadequacies of the weak and making sure that there's a bridge that can actually transit the weak from the arena of weakness, of course, to the arena of strength, which is needed for economic and social emancipation of our people. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, we have about seven major land borders, isn't it? Land borders, we have a um, border with Niger, mm -hmm. we have border with um, Chad, we have border with Bena Republic, and we have border with Cameroon. Cameroon. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I understand that recently there were a reopening of some of the borders. Uh, Maybe because we're talking about border posts. Bo and, border posts, entry yeah. Point. The major we, border no, posts we, we in the have country. A, we Do you have remember a, President Buhari yeah. shot some of the border yeah. on, based on some economic and uh, partly six, mm -hmm. some security reasons, but under the Tunubu government, some of these borders were said to be partially reopened, isn't it? No, well, the borders were, never, were not shot by Buhari against human um, migration. It was purely on the issue of goods and, 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 yes. and vehicles and stuff like that, which falls under the purview of customs. Mm -hmm. Customs is not under the Ministry of Interior. Customs is under the Ministry of Finance. I, I, mean, I understand, but, but this is where I'm going But we, for our entry point, we have about 1,800 entry points, both the, 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 the major one, the medium, and the minor entry point. We have about 1,800, of which we have about 700 manned and about 1,100 unmanned, which are areas where the Tinubu administration is working so hard on to be able to make sure that all our entry points are manned both in terms of human, um, human, capital, human uh, intervention as well as technological um, facilities. This is where I'm going to, Honorable Minister. And I'd like yeah. to know, because past administrations have complained about what the danger of our porous borders and what they are doing to not only our economy, but majorly the security of this country. And, you know, in fact, there was a time... That, uh, the, the, the accusation is that most of the attacks we get are not from, they are from aliens. They are, they are, they are, external aggression are from aliens, those who are not 
even Nigerians we do not know, and they are difficult to control. In fact, the narrative you will get in some part of the north is that the attacks will come, even in the northwest, the attack will come, and those people retreat, and they are not able to track them. In what way are you using technology? What technology are you studying? Which country's template are you using? What can you tell Nigerians about the effort of this government? Well, let me tell you this. As much as I wouldn't want to go into details, just as you know, I always say the security issues are not meant to be discussed on camera, but I'll say this very clearly to you. What you've just described is the scenario where in Nigeria is called asymmetric warfare. You know, and prior to about 20 years ago, you know, before the advent of Boko Haram and stuff like that, we had symmetric warfare. But now we have moved from that arena. We saw, and in most countries, when you have asymmetric warfare, it takes time for you to be able to solve it. We saw what happened in uh, Sri Lanka, you know, that took about 20 years, you know, with the Tamir Tigers, it took about 20 years because these people, they hit you, they, they fizzle out, they mix up, and it's a, it's a bit complex. So, but what we're, we're actually doing, as I will say this, is that I said at the beginning, a secure border is a safe nation. We have understood that now. And there's no going back on that. The president is hell-bent on that. He has given us machine orders as Ministry of Interior secure this border. I want this border secured. And technology, of course, has to be involved because this is not 2003. This is 2023. So the role of technology as, of course, enhancement of solution delivery cannot be undermined in whatever we say. So we are looking, of course, there are three sectors. We look at the human intelligence aspect, which is very key because you can only protect people as much as they want to be protected. That's just the truth. We saw what happened in Afghanistan. We saw what happened in Iraq, what happened in Libya. If people do not support you, give you the human intelligence that you need, it might be a bit difficult for you to be able to solve problem of insecurity. That's one. Two, you need, of course, technology. You know, I will not want to tell you the technologies that we are understudying at this, at the, at this particular So you are, um, that is in the no, work? No, definitely. That's, definitely, that's so in the work. So you, you are able to have uh, somewhat like uh, a, a, co a, a command and control center where you can be able to, per time, watch our borders. What's is that you, right? What, is that what you're planning? What, what you're saying now is like trying so you, you want me to give you a glimpse at what is I happening. I mean, magic, but of course, but what I want to assure of, you. Is obtainable what, in other what, no, what I want to assure you is that there's a robust solution. Is there, as, I, as I said You earlier, found a solution. No, definitely, there is. There is. Like I always tell people, you, it's not rocket science. The problems of any country are not just peculiar to their country. I mean, whatever is happening here had happened elsewhere. So what you need to do is to copy. Of course, you adapt to your peculiarity, and you paste. The CAP, simple. So, of course, we are, that's the essence of research. Don't forget that some of us come from consulting and research background. So, it's about the solution delivery that we are, that we are proposing across, but even beyond, but even in other areas, at things looking at similar countries, looking at sim countries with similar challenges and with certain level of um, peculiarities that you might have put that into consideration you copy you adapt it to your own peculiarity mm. and you pay so we're looking at it because honorable minister it was mind-boggling and it was actually heart-wrenching when our girls were being kidnapped in their schools in the middle of the night when our boys young boys were being taken in adamawa in their schools in their hostels and they are taking hours after this happened no intervention. And they do say, security uh, um, experts will say, look, the very first few hours after such kind of attack is very crucial. A lot of the times we hear that they have been taken out of the country. And that's why a lot of people will say, and we've spoken, China's television has held a special town hall on national security. And the, these solutions have been proffered that we should not have a situation where attack will be Will, will be done on our soil, and hours later, we do not even have an idea, a clue on what is happening. Kujie prison was attacked. Hours later, those who are in charge do not even have a clue of what happened. And that's why I'm asking the question tonight. Whether or not, in a no distant time, this government has the solution that will make Nigerians happy. Chair, let me tell you this. I listened very carefully to you. You know the difference between a talk shop and a workshop?
people misplace, people mix these two things up. This is a government built on renewed hope. Renewed hope means a new lease of life. Not doing things the same old way while expecting a different result. We are in, embarking on a workshop, not a talk shop. We're not here to give you stories, tales of moonlight. We're not here to tell you how bad things are. We're here to tell you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And we're here to tell you that under the leadership of the president, and of course, the team that he has assembled, we are hell-bent, we are determined to make sure that we solve these problems. Because the only interest that is worth protecting at every point in time it's not just the interest of individuals. Of course, never the interest of any individual, but the interest of Nigeria. Understanding that Nigeria first, Nigeria second, and Nigeria always. And this can only be done when there is security. So you can be rest assured, and I give you this, live on TV, that we're walking around the clock. The president is not sleeping. He is the chief security officer of Nigeria. He's the CSO of Nigeria. That's the truth. And he is a commander in chief of the armed forces. And he understands that the primary responsibility of government is security of lives and property. And I want to tell you, it's not by mistake that you can see decline in the level of attacks. It's not by mistake over the last couple of months that you can see progress, that you can see that, progress, that we've been able to make progresses, that we've been able to even surmount certain hurdles. Rome wasn't built in a day. But be rest assured, we have the will. Be rest assured, the capacity is there. And be rest assured that in no distant time, Nigerians will be able to sleep with their two eyes closed. Mm. It is only then that economic and social emancipation can come. Mm. We understand that for, you, for us to attain our economic potential, we need to defend and protect this country. We need to take our country back. And this is what we are doing. Be rest assured, we have, we have solutions. Technology solution. Both technology, both, um, both technology and even human solutions. It's not just about technology. Yes, you can have the right technology. If you don't have the right human intelligence, it will be screwed up. You'll be screwed up. So it's about, it's a hybrid solution. I always say this. There's no silver bullet to insecurity in Nigeria. The only solution is a cocktail. We have to be able to bring all solutions together. It's a cocktail of solutions. We are determined. That's the most important thing. Right. And of course, the determination is backed up with capacity. And you can be rest assured in no distant time. Are you relating with private interest in also ensuring? Because uh, some of the private uh, security interests are some of the highest employers of labor. Definitely. What are you doing in that respect? Well, I will tell you this very clearly. Thank you for the question. I, I believe in the context of what you if I, if I may rephrase it, I think you're talking about the private security companies, right? Yes, In absolutely. the enhancement of internal security. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what you're talking absolutely. about. Absolutely. Fantastic. In, when it comes to that, it's a major part anywhere in the world. Even in South Africa, the ratio of the private security to the public security is a ratio two to one. Even in Dubai, it's there. In Sweden, in so many countries, even in the United States, you looking at our population in Nigeria, we have about 370,000 police officers in Nigeria. We have about 68,000 um, civil defense officers. Cumulatively, that gives me roughly about 430 something thousand. Less than 450. Yeah, no, about less than 450. And of course, a country of over 220, 230 million. On the law of average, it means that one security official, either police or NSCDC, is to 517 people. So that is a huge number, one of the highest anywhere in the world. So for us to be able to bridge that gap, we must be able to look at how to revamp, how to rebrand, and of course, how to, how to, um, how to revigorate the security, private security company. It's very key. Just today, I just flew in from Lagos because they had this private security summit, security summit in Lagos that I attended. And I had said it very clearly there that the private security, we cannot talk of national security or internal security without talking about them. That's just the truth. And don't forget, they employ millions of people. 
we have about 1,850 private security companies in Nigeria. But the issue is this. It's not about the number. It's about the capacity. It's about the knowledge. It's about the technical know-how. And of course, it's about the level of training and knowledge transfer that exists. You know, these are areas we need to. And also, we must also look at the law because the, the Private Companies uh, Guards Act of 1986, it's, it's old. You know, the security challenges in 1986, of course, are not the same as 2023. So obviously, we need to rework the law. And I want to tell you, the ministry is already working on that. As a matter of fact, we've set up a committee uh, headed by the Pam Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Interior. We have representatives of uh, NSCDC, because NSCDC that uh, supervises them, that oversights them, I mean, the private security companies. And of course, we also have the uh, Association of Licensed Private Security um, practitioners of Nigeria as representatives on, on that committee. So we are reworking the law, reworking the whole methodology, and we are trying to come up with a, a new SOP, apart from the law, a standard operating procedure, you know, for the, the, the particular industry. Our, I mean, when the attack on, in Owo happened, uh, in the Catholic Church in Owo, uh, there was uh, an order by the governor, uh, Ruti Akiri Dolu, that most private interest and government organization must now have CCTV cameras. In the United States, for example, and in some other crimes, when there is a crime, and the crime scene, the first thing that the police try to find is to look for the cameras, and they have access to some of the cameras from the private interest, and the public interest is quite easier. I mean, are we developing a policy that such that will make it life difficult for criminals and those who are threatening the security of this country in such a way that we can have eyes on, at almost everywhere in this country? Of course, it's, I mean, it's work in progress, but we have to also be uh, alive to certain challenges that we have. You know, I don't, believe on, I don't believe in coming on TV and making all the promises, you know, as if uh, in the spirit of the season we're approaching Christmas, as if government is Father Christmas, no. So I will be very uh, realistic that there are certain challenges when you talk about CCTV across the whole uh, part of Nigeria. You know, it's a large venture. And um, of course, I believe that, but for public areas, of course, there's a necessity for that. And that is why I, I also believe in the enhancement of the capacity of uh, private security companies, because some of the, in some of these countries that you speak about, some of these particular facilities are actually outsourced, you know, through third party vendors and private. Because don't forget that um, the, the, the major difference between uh, public security agencies and um, the private security agencies, the private security agencies are mainly, one, they're profit driven, and also, number two, is the fact that they are more preventive in terms of their approach. For instance, if you have a guard, a private security guard, his responsibility is to make sure that you are not hot. His responsibility is not to investigate when you are hot. So they are more preventive in terms of um, their thinking. So these are areas that we need to uh, really work on. It's a good initiative, but we have to be able to take it one after the other, probably look at areas of high heat wave, you know, like Lagos, um, Abuja, Kano, some of these are commercial areas right. because it is not just rocket science that the level of uh, criminality one way or the other tend to, uh, go, tends to be higher, you know, in urban areas and, um, and stuff like that. So because we have to look at power issues. We have to look at other social issues. But of course, it's one that we really need to sit down, walk, walk, walk um, around and try to create um, a solution that will enhance the capacity mm -hmm. of our uh, security agencies to be able to deliver on their mandates. I remember that you promised a part of it was on this program you promised that you were going to clear the backlog of passport, which you came back and you said it has been cleared. You promised automation and the ease of uh, applying for passport in Nigeria. Has that been done? Well, we promised, for, we, we gave a date, we said December. That's what we said. Mm -hmm. And um, I can tell you, we are 99% done. If I have done the, the testing, and uh, we, are going, we should be going live in the next um, one week or thereabout. And um, as I said, that will ensure that Nigerians, all they need to do 
in an immigration center, a passport center, with just biometrics, just to take your fingerprint, that's all. So you, you know, do all of those other processes? Everything, everything pre, is going to be pre-biometrics pre -biometric, pre in, in the comfort of yes, your Yes, of course. Even on your people, phone? Even your, including uploading of your, your, pic your, of your passport picture, or you just like you do of your, your supporting visa, documents. Your visa. Exactly. So we are doing that. I think it's a minor. We mm -hmm. have gone beyond that. In fact, we, we've gone through it. I made, they would have gone live about two weeks ago. But I saw some errors when they came to do presentation, and I said, no, this cannot be this, this cannot be this. We're talking about balancing um, national security as well as convenience. There must be a middle point. You cannot bring discomfort on the basis of insecurity or in basis of enhancement of security. You must find a meeting point of both, both security and, of course, comfort. So that would be like so, a Christmas gift to no, Nigeria? No, it's going to be. And again, apart from that, as I've, I promised on this year, I said by February, all our, our international airports, we have e-gates, you know. Once you're a Nigerian and you're coming to Nigeria, you have no business in an immigration officer, you know, except if you, are, if you are a person of interest. If you're an American citizen, as soon as you get to the short of America, they say, welcome back home. You swipe your passport and you... you that, that, that is why I said, what we want to give to Nigeria under the Renewed Hope Agenda is called sweet experience. So that's what Nigerians so will once, by once you get by back to February, country, you just put your passport, scan your passport, get your biometric read, then you pass and you go. This is, so we're already doing that. As a matter of fact, the first consignment will be, will be, will be delivered by, by Saturday this week. You know, the first consignment will be delivered. And I believe in the next uh, two weeks, we'll have um, started the configuration of the first consignment in Abuja. That's about four numbers, and um, obviously give Nigerians uh, a seamless experience and let Nigerians understand that this, that renewed hope is not in talk, it's in action, and it's actually indeed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I need to round up quickly on the issue of security and go quickly to other areas under the, your ministry's mandate. And you are talking about private uh, security and those who are asking questions about identities of those who who are uh, the, the private uh, security organization, those who are worried that are they properly coordinated and they properly oversighted? Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, we are trying to... Uh, the, the, the training manual had been approved by me, you know, for the private security guards. And also, we are introducing something called the GMS, you know, the guard management system, whereby um, the ID of all these uh, um, uh, guards, you know, will be, will be embedded. And also, it's going to involve their biometrics. We'll take their biometrics and, of course, we'll do a, a criminal record check, you know, of, uh, of our guards before they can be eligible, you know, to be, to be posted as security guards. Because don't forget that uh, these are people that will leave the most vulnerable in our society with. So we need to be sure that they are who they actually say they are. We need to be sure that the person who is your guard or who you have employed or who you are paying to, to secure your home is not actually um, a wanted criminal. We want to be sure that that person has a clean criminal record and all the sorts. So we are coming up with that solution uh, very soon. I think we are on the last leg of um, the solution. And in no distant time, Nigerians from their phone will be able to check uh, the record of some of these, um, of the, some of these guards to as ensure much, that they, yeah. they have the level of comfort that yeah. they deserve. Quickly, as much as I want to move on quickly, there are a lot of people, uh, as soon as I posted about your coming, uh, the, the asking question, there are those who are saying, in the UK, they are finding it hard to get passport in time. Uh, Tom did biometric in November, uh, and was asked to come for passport in January 2024. Yeah. Uh, are you easing the pains of Nigerians outside of Nigeria? No, I, I, I think there are only two places where I think we have this challenge now, realistically. I think in the UK, precisely UK, uh, London, and in the US, I think uh, precisely in New York. These are two places where we have the challenge, and that has to do with the concentration of Nigerians. We have a lot of Nigerians, you know, and I told you on air the last time I was here that the only solution to that is for us to have what we call the passport front offices across um, the United Kingdom, um, in the U.S., and in other countries. Why do we have this problem? Because we have only one passport office 
in the entire United Kingdom. You know, uh, somebody who is in Edinburgh, Scotland, somebody who is in Cardiff, in Wales, or somebody who is in Belfast, in um, not uh, not Ireland, must come to London. Or somebody from Manchester, or somebody from Birmingham has to come to London to come and capture. So, what is the capacity that we can take in a day, and how many people do we have? You know, asking for passport. Don't forget that we have hundreds of thousands of Nigerians, you know, resident in this country. So the only solution to that is there's not there's no quick fix. But we we have assured Nigerians that by February next year would have opened our front offices such that we'll have front offices in Manchester, we'll have in Birmingham, we'll, can, we'll have in, the, in Cardiff, in Wales, we'll have in Scotland. So once we have this, definitely it will reduce the stress on, of Nigerians, it will reduce the waiting period, and of course it will bring efficiency into the whole uh -huh. passport uh, procurement system. Let me go straight to the issue of uh, the prisons. Uh, you ordered an investigation to some officials who are aiding terrorism. What is the outcome of that? Well, we, I ordered um, investigation, but I will not want to start, uh, sit here and say to officers aiding. They are not, uh, it, it will be wrong to be, to be conclusive. Allegation? Exactly, that allegedly, allegedly. Mm -hmm. I would love you to put the word allegedly, because it's still an allegation. As much as I'm not protecting them, not shielding them, but the simple truth is there are mechanisms where which will work. So there, there's an allegation, and people have the right to defend themselves. We believe that uh, uh, as much as we don't like to be exchanging words, you know, in front of camera, but we believe that if the uh, defense headquarters, uh, if there's an information like this, it will have been more uh, in the spirit of harmonious um, working, uh, you know, it will, it will have been more harmonious, and it will have been more benefiting to the nation if this... Um, information had been passed, you know, to the and ministry. Shared, with the, uh, ministry, shared yeah. with the ministry, and we can do our house cleaning, you know. But I was a bit uh, surprised because, uh, like a week before then, I was with the chief of defense staff, you know, and um, issues like this didn't come up. But like what I said, we're not here to to um, to exchange accusations. We're not here to defend accusations. We're here to to harmonize our positions to collaborate and um, to be able to work together but, in the, in but the how far with the investigation? Yeah, the investigation is going on. You when know? is the report likely to come up? Well, I will not sit down and tell you that now. Would because, you make the report public? The, if, because, when, when of course, done? if if it is in the negative, we will, definitely, because people, that is treason. It's treasonable as far as I'm concerned. You cannot be an officer of government and you swore an oath to protect and defend the integrity of this country and you will compromise it by conniving with terrorists, that, is, it, it, this, that would be despicable, it would be unacceptable. That would, that would be the most ridiculous, that would be, in fact, it's out of this world. It's unimaginable, it's unfathomable. It's not something I can even just imagine in my head, that an officer of law will go as low as conniving with terrorists to attack the nation. That is a treasonable offense. And, and, I, that and will, I hope that this and government that can will, will never, take that seriously. I want to tell you, that can never, under any guise, under any condition, in whatever manner, be swept under the carpet. It's a serious allegation. We're hoping it to hear from you. It is a serious well, allegation, as, as and you can't be rest assured. Yeah. In the interest of Nigeria, I have always said this, the only constant in Nigeria is Nigeria. The interest of Nigeria is the constant. We are all variables. Today, I'm Minister of Interior. Yesterday was somebody else. Next tomorrow will be somebody else. Today, President Bala Metunubu is the commander in chief. Yesterday it was President Muhammadu Buhari. There will be a president in the future. Today, Senator Goswil Akpabio is Senate president. Before it was Ahmed Lawa. Before Ahmed, Senator Ahmed Lawa, we had the David Ma, we had the Bukola Saraki. We are all variables, regardless of our offices that we occupy. The only constant is the interest of Nigeria. So if an officer, and I repeat, an officer, because the president has given us a machine order. As we are, we have signed, I, I tell people, when we signed our contract with the president, you heard him speak. That was a pre, I mean, was a, an undated resignation letter if you don't deliver. So for somebody to undermine the security of this country, 
to undermine the integrity of this country, to undermine the reputation of this country, for such person to, un to undermine what we stand for in this country, to undermine the effort of government. It's a treasonable thing. Minister, because of the time, so let me quickly touch on what Mr. Falano, his objection. But please, before you, move, be, but before you move to that, let me say this. By saying what I have said, it does not mean that I have agreed that, this, that the allegation is true. I have not said it is true, but we will investigate to the, to the latter. Okay, all right. We'll be looking forward to that, uh, Minister. Quickly, uh, in the decongestion, 4, 000, over 4,000 actually, of those who have uh, less than about 1 million Naira fine uh, are being uh, eased out of the prison service. Uh, that event, oh, I mean, upon the Inkuje, Mr. Falano, uh, uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, said that money should have been used for the welfare of the, 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 the inmates rather than use, uh, being used in the manner it was used. Do you agree? Well, I will tell you this very clearly. There is no welfare that is more important than freedom. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, um, my, my elder brother uh, is somebody I respect a lot, and he shared his opinion with me even before um, we, we brainstormed about it because somebody I have enormous respect for. And, but my position is that we didn't spend a cobble of government money. Let's not forget that. We were able to uh, rally the private sector as a form of CSR to release these people. And also, when they talk about pardon, they talk about... Um, Purgacy you know, of mercy. Purgacy of mercy. You have to understand how complicated and complex these issues are. Do not forget that about 72% of our inmates are actually state offenders. They are not federal offenders. Let us take note of that. So if you want to go that route of pardon, you know, you know how long we've been on this setting up of panel for pardon, whatever, whatever. So I'm not saying it's not doable, but to me, it will take a bit of time. And I do not believe that a Nigerian should spend an hour in custody due to poverty or economic status. There, is, there are people, as low as 4,000 was their fine. They weren't able to pay fine of 4,000, and they are in correctional centers. Why should the man stay in correctional center because of something as low as 20,000, something 100,000, 50,000, 4,000? We are human beings. Before we talk about, we have to have, there has to be compassion. Go, governance is about compassion. It's about understanding that we are here to be able to bridge the gap between the weak and the strong. So what we have done is to release, to pay off these fines, and of course, not just fines, but compensation. Because there are some people, you pay fine, then there's compensation for something to do. For the parties that, the party that are involved. That. So we were able to sort all those ones out. You know, that's why what came to 585 million. And the good thing for me, and that's the joy of this administration, renewed hope, as I always say, it's about bringing smile, you know, to people. It's about giving people hope and knowing fully well that, that Nigeria is where Nigeria is today does not mean a greater Nigeria does not lie in the future. And the future starts from now. That's what we're trying let's to do. Justice. So before yeah. you go on, let me say this. You look at the economy of scale. To feed these 4,068 inmates, it costs government about 3 million, over 3 million a day to feed, to feed them. Multiply 3 million a day by 365 days. It means we raised 585 million from the private sector to offset these um, fines and compensations to save government of average of 1.1 billion era per annum in feeding. That's just the economy of scale. So to me, what is the, it was the economics. What is the justification behind feeding somebody with 1.1 billion, you know, why holding him for 585 million? Especially when that 585 million isn't coming from government. Yeah. Minister, we are totally out of time, but let's do justice to the fire service. The last time we were not able to touch him. But there are those who believe that when there is a fire situation, there is no hope. A way out of access. There's no way to be, to be able to get out of it. Fire service. Are you getting it back on track? Yes. Um, we're doing everything we can. And we, it will start with the uh, enactment of the Fire and Rescue Service Act. 
we have to understand that out. Of course, I don't, don't, you know, I come from the legislature, so I'm biased when it comes to laws, you know. So we have to be able to understand the role fire service should be playing. And we must come up with innovations on how the fire service, apart from solving fire issues, you know, the fire service, supposed, they are supposed to be the first responders, you know, in any emergency um, situation. The fire service goes beyond just tackling fire or combating fire. The fire service goes into rescue. Even when there's an accident, when there are issues, they are supposed to be first responders. That's the way it's done all over the world. So we must now understand and ask ourselves, how come the fire service elsewhere is one of the highest employers of labor? But in Nigeria, they're not really doing so, so well in terms of employment and in terms of capacity and capabilities. So we have to ask ourselves, number one is the issue of the law which we are working on now, you know, to be able to rework the law. I believe is, um, it's in the National Assembly as we speak. Um, I think the Deputy Speaker uh, actually uh, sponsored that particular bill of the Fire and Rescue Service Act. So we hope that will go through the legislative process and get our centre to. Then after that, we must now sit down and really redesign, looking at our architecture, looking at our geographical spread as a nation, mm. to be able to ask ourselves, I want to know the reason why... It will interest you, let me say this. In most buildings, you see fire extinguishers. But to those buildings, to a lot of them, fire extinguishers are nothing but piece of furniture. That's the truth. People don't even know how to use these centers. So my question is, for commercial centers, for religious centers, and of course, for um, non-residential centers, and even our markets and co, why can't we have people that we call the fire and rescue service officers, you know? So the fire service will go beyond the issue of tackling fire. They will be able to be trainers, train the trainers, be able to accredit, just like NSCDC does for the private security right. company, and be able to, to license these people to be able to combat fire at the earliest stage right, before help actually comes. <laughs> We're totally out of time, unfortunately. I, I will list almost 100 items to do with. We won't be able to scratch it of it. But thank you so much, Indy, for your time. Yeah, and exactly. I wish you the very best. Thank you. Uh, I indeed wish you the very best in, in the real sense of it. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister for Interior, Ulubu Mitsui Thank, thank you, you so much for Thank coming. you for having me.